Hello folks, welcome back. So uh, I'm recording another data analysis video here and uh, still on the topic of factorial ANOVA. And in this video, what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to conduct an independent groups factorial ANOVA uh, in Jupyter Notebook using Python, using the different software libraries. And in this case, what I'll do is I'll use a data set uh, where we find we've got a significant interaction between the independent variables. Uh, and I'll explain how to interpret the output, the results, uh, so we understand what's going on. Okay, so um, specifically what I'm going to demonstrate here is a uh, what we'd call a 2 by 3 ANOVA. So we've got two independent variables, one of them's got two levels, and one of them's got three levels, and we have still have one dependent variable. And the data I'm going to use uh, is data that comes from a behavioral game theory study. I can't remember if this is real data or if I think this is, was uh, simulated, but based on a real design. Um, so it comes from a behavioral game theory study where participants have played an economic game. And we've got 48 participants and each participant has played uh, against one other participant and each player had to make a consumption decision in every round of the game about how much of a generalized resource they would like to consume. Okay, so when playing the game, participants, they accumulated points for their consumption decisions. And these were just the kind of number of units of the resource they chose to consume. Uh, but they could overuse or overuse or destroy the resource base by making too large a consumption choice in any round. So there was like a stable optimum point for consumption decisions in any given round that gave the player their largest number of points whilst preserving the resource so a further round of the game could be played where they could accumulate even more points okay so they've got to find this balance between immediate rewards and potential future payoffs uh, so part participants played this game in one of two anonymity conditions seen or unseen and this was where they played the game face to face with an opponent or in separate rooms so they never met. So that's one of the independent variables. Uh, I've called it anonymity. And then um, I'll say more about it in a second, but they, were, they either played the game face-to-face -face with another player or they never saw each other, never interacted. Um, a second variable was also included that manipulated the amount of information participants had available regarding the resource base. Uh, so this had three levels. One was known value. So it, in this condition, participants knew how many units of the resource were available throughout the game. Uh, and the next level was low uncertainty. In this condition, participants, they didn't know how much uh, of the resource was available at the start of the game. But as the game progressed, they gained information about how much of the resource there, what there actually was. OK, so they could use that to inform their decisions. And the third condition was like a high uncertainty condition where participants never knew the value of the resource available. They only knew whether it decreased in value or if it had refreshed the starting value. Um, OK, so what we've got here is a factorial design. We've got more than one independent variable. So the first independent variable, IV1, I've called it anonymity and it's got two levels, seen and unseen. Did they play the game face to face with another player or in separate rooms? And the second independent variable, uh, independent variable two, IV2, uh, I've called it information. And there were three levels, known value of the resource, low uncertainty about how much there was of the resource, high uncertainty. So they never knew how much there was, essentially. And the DV, the outcome measure that we're interested in here was their mean consumption decision in the game. So there were there differences across these conditions in the decisions people made about how much of the resource they'd like to consume. So... In the below uh, cells, I'm going to demonstrate the analysis. Uh, uh, I'm going to tidy the data so the categories are labelled. I'll conduct a Levine's test to assess if we can assume homogeneity variance about the about the independent variables. And then I'll conduct a two by three independent um, groups and over. Um, I, I will then follow this up by conducting tests of simple effects to interpret a significant interaction between the independent variables. So a bit of a spoiler there, we're gonna find that we have um, a significant interaction between the IVs. I'll say more about that when we come to it. But to start with, um, I'm gonna import some key libraries. 
I'm going to import pandas as pd, numpy as mp. I'm going to import scipy.stats as stats in case we need to yeah, do any. Uh, we will actually. Yeah, we'll work out some means and stuff like that. I'm going to import matplotlib and pipe and um, seaborn as well for some plotting. I'm going to create a, uh, a point plot essentially so we can see the interaction. And uh, I'm not, I haven't done it yet, but I will also import uh, stats models because I think I will use stats models um, to fit the model essentially. Okay, so let me import the data set. I've already said a lot about what this is. So let's look at the header. So we've got these three variables, two, anonymity and information are our independent variables and consumption is our dependent variable. And as you can see here, if I run the info cell as well, all three have been imported because these have been dummy coded and although the categories information and anonymity, they've got, they've been dummy coded one, zero and one or zero, uh, one, two, uh, and pandas has kind of tried to identify the, the data type and it's, inter it's identified them all as integers, 64 bit integers, essentially. So what we can see here is uh, the two categorical variables, uh, because they're numerical, numerically coded, uh, so, those rep so, so those different categories are represented by numbers for the analysis, uh, pandas has interpreted them as integers rather than categorical objects. So the first thing I, I want to do with this data set is turn these two variables into objects that have meaningful labels for each category. That will help with understanding and interpret output later in the analysis. So to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to, the method I'm going to use, I'm going to use the dot map method and uh, zip, I'm going to create two lists. I'm going to create a new variable and append it to the data frame and call it anonymity, uh, which was the original variable, underscore cat, so categorical, uh, with categorical labels. And that's basically going to be the original anonymity label, but I'm, uh, anonymity variable, but I'm going to sort of map seen to zero and unseen to one, essentially, using this, using a dictionary and the zip, uh, this zip function and pass in the lists A and B to it. So I've done this a number of times now. If I run that, sorry, that's my phone beeping, and do the same. So that, that was for the anonymity variable. I'm going to do the same for the information variable. I'm going to create and append a new variable called info cat, which will put labels to the different uh, integer values. If we look at the header now, this data frame, you can see we've got these new variables added. Uh, and I've, I've said this a number of times now in videos, I kind of, if I need to manipulate a variable, I kind of tend to leave the original variable in place, unless I've got a really big data set uh, with lots of features, lots of variables. I kind of leave the original ones in place and I kind of append new ones. So you see now one represents uh, scene, zero represents the known information category. Uh, so those things are labeled. And if we look at, the info on this data set now, what we should see is consumption is our DV and that's still a scale. It's still measured as integers, integer numerical values. That's good. But we've now got these two objects that represent our categorical variables for anonymity and information. OK, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some Levine's tests uh, to see if the different groups uh, in Different groups in the, in each of the categorical in the variables, independent variables, have equal variances. So it's a common test of assumption for parametric and over tests. Demonstrate it elsewhere. What I'm going to do here is use the Levine method from the Penguin software library, and that's uh, that's basically PG dot It's a test of Hermaskedacity essentially. So I'm going to import Penguin as PG. That's a great software library for statistical different statistical analyses. And then I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to look to see if we can uh, if we can assume equal variances or equality of error variances for the different groups for each independent variable separately. So I'm going to first do a Levine's test on uh, the anonymity categorical uh, variable and also on the information categorical variable. You can see, oh, I ran that twice, didn't need to. Uh, you can see the arguments, the parameters the parameters that it, this takes, the arguments that I've passed, essentially are the consumption underscore data frame. So this is the name of the data frame we imported above um, using pandas. Let me go. 
it up a couple of times. See, I gave it, I called it consump underscore df. And the dv is consumption, so that's our dependent variable. A group, group in, the group equals, and then we've passed the independent variable, each one the first time I did anonymity and the second one the information. And I've asked it to use the mean as the measure of center. I think by default it uses the medium, which is a slightly different test, but we're just looking for a bog standard Levine's test. And what we're seeing here is we have one significant Levine's test for the anonymity variable. So we've got, if we look at this, I won't explain again, because I've done it in previous videos, how to work out the degrees of freedom here, but we've got F, open brackets, one and 46. Those are our between and within subjects degrees of freedom. That equals 6.14 in this case, if we round this value to two decimal places. And we've got P equals 0.02. Two, if we round this to two, the p-value to two decimal places. So we've got a significant Levine's test for an anonymity variable, uh, and it gives us this Boolean uh, true or false. Can we assume equal variances? It's false in this case, so we've got a significant Levine's test. Uh, and But we've got a non-significant Levine's test for the information variable, and there we, you can see we've got uh, f, Degrees of freedom are 2 and 45 equals 2.83. P is equal to 0.07 if we round that to 2. And true that we can assume equal variances. So it sh it, this tells us that we're safe to assume equal variances for only one of the independent variables. And that is information. We can't assume that for anonymity. This is problematic, really. Uh, but our best approach uh, with factorial ANOVA here is to probably run the ANOVA model and then if there is a significant main effect for uh, for the anonymity independent variable where we can't assume equal variances, we could then run a more robust one-way ANOVA, such as Welsh's ANOVA, ANOVA on that variable in isolation to assess if the main effect is still significant when we use a stricter test. It isn't going to be too much of an issue here because we're going to find we've got a significant interaction, so we're not going to care too much about having significant main effects. Okay, so um, useful bit of a bit of initial test there to test for assumptions. And what we've found is only one of our independent variables can we make this assumption of equal variances. So slightly problematic, but there's no sort of easy way really uh, to run a more robust test. We'd kind of run the test, and then um, if we if it was if it was important to correctly interpret a main effect for anonymity where we can't assume equal variances, we probably want to run a one-way ANOVA just on that, uh, using that as the independent variable, using an, a robust Walsh's test. Okay, but let's get back to, so let's get on with this actual 2 by 3 factorial ANOVA. Um, so there are a number of options for conducting this analysis in Python, and on this occasion, uh, on this occasion what I'll use is the ANOVA underscore LM um, method from the stats models software library. So this method for fitting ANOVA models uses the same style of formulas as used in the R programming language. So this is quite nice. I'm gonna, let me, first I'm gonna import stats models.api's SM. So it's got a nice nickname that's convenient for us to refer to it by. And then from stats models.formula.api, I'm gonna import OLS. So that's the ordinary least squares method that we're going to use here. Okay, so next I'm going to fit a linear model uh, containing only the categorical independent variables uh, and also the interaction between those independent variables. Okay, so I'm the, and I, I'm passing it, this as a string and it's formatted as it, as it says above in the same style as the same formula style as you kind of would use to run this type of analysis in the R programming language. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object called consump underscore LM, so consumption linear model, and I'm going to use the ordinary least squares method from stats models, so LLS. And in brackets, I'm basically passing as a string, you know it's all within single quotes, uh, this text that's kind of in red. And the format for it is, I'm saying the con consumption, which is our DV, is a function of uh, our, our independent variables, essentially. And the first one is anonymity. The second one is information. 
and the third one here we've got anon cat and then this uh, colon and then info cat this third term here after the plus sign this specifies the interaction between anonymity and information okay so the c in the brackets is just kind of the r way of presenting something as of telling um telling uh, stats models that it's a categorical variable and then data here after the comma we've got data equals consump the f so we've told it which data frame to use and then all in one all in one line i'm then fitting so i'm specifying the model and then dot fit fitting the model essentially okay and then under this underneath what i'm then going to use is use the having kind of fitted this or this odd and release scale linear model i'm going to use the an over lm method and pass that linear model in as an argument to that method so i'm going to create another object called aov underscore consumpt so an over underscore consumption and that e that is equal to sm.stats.anova underscore lm and now what i'm putting in parentheses here is this object containing this fitted linear model from above and if we then call this aov consumpt object what that will do is return a nice anova output table for us in nice in in pandas html um, format very nice so here we can see we've got our f values our probability values and you see this first line here c brackets anon cat um, this is what we would say this is uh, this is what's the relationship between our an anonymity variable and consumption if we kind of ignored these other two uh, so what's the main effect of anonymity the second one here just the information what's the main effect of information in relation to the, to the dv and then our third one here is this interaction term so what's the interaction between these two and the dv uh, so what we're seeing here is the um, the anover output table it indicates there's a significant main effect of anonymity uh, so we're seeing here we've got uh, if we We've got an F, if we open brackets and then put our degrees of freedom there, 1 and 42. So the between groups and the residual or error degrees of freedom, that's equal to 15.58. So you can hopefully you can see that's come from there. And then P is less than 0 0.001. So I've just kind of rounded this to less than 0 0.000. So we've got a significant main effect of anonymity. Uh, that was problematic, I believe, because that was the one where we couldn't assume equal variances. We've got a significant main effect of information as well. So we've got, uh, for information, we've got F, open brackets, degrees of freedom are 2 and 42. And that's equal to 6.04. P is equal to 0 0.004. We could have round that to 0 0.005, I guess, if we, uh, if we wanted to. Uh, but we've also got, if we look at our interaction, we've got a significant interaction between anonymity and information. And here we can see we've got an F, F open brackets, 2 and 42 is equal to 8.51, if we round that to two decimal places. And P is less than 0 0.001 in this case, if we kind of just round that down a little bit. So... These results suggest there's a significant interaction between the anonymity group in terms of their, uh, sorry, there's a significant difference between the anonymity group in terms of their mean consumption. So that would be the main effect of anonymity. A significant difference between the information groups in terms of their mean consumption. So that'd be the main effect of information. Uh, when the effect of these IVs on the DV is considered in isolation. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing when we just look at main effects. However, we also have a significant interaction between these variables and the dependent variable, the DV. So what that means is that the pattern of differences on the DV for one independent variable is not the same when considered across all levels of the other independent variable. And this, this tells us that the main effects are not consistent. In order to understand what is going on, we need to interpret the interaction effect. Uh, we do that by holding each level of one of the independent variables constant and comparing differences between groups on the other independent variable. So this means breaking the two independent variables down into more granular groups and conducting a series of follow-up analyses. These tests or these follow-up analyses are referred to as tests of simple effects. 
So in order to interpret this interaction where we've got two IVs, one with two levels, one with three levels, the following five tests of simple effects are required to understand the interaction. So we need to, we need to do a one-way and over comparing all three levels of, the, of information in the unseen anonymity condition. We need to do a one-way and over comparing all three levels of information in the seen anonymity condition. We need to do a one-way ANOVA or a Bonferroni corrected t-test comparing both levels of anonymity in the known value information condition. A one-way ANOVA or Bonferroni corrected t-test comparing um, both levels of anonymity in the low uncertainty information condition and a one-way ANOVA or Bonferroni corrected t-test comparing both levels of anonymity in the high uncertainty information condition. I've noticed I've just noticed and it's driving me crazy that there are a couple of parentheses missing here. Anyway, so simple effects, we've got a number of we've got a number of tests that we multiple tests, multiple comparisons we need to do in order to, to, to pick apart and understand the significant interaction. So to conduct tests of simple effects on this interaction, I'm going to proceed by creating a column in the data frame that contains all possible group combinations of the IVs in the interaction term. And then what I'll use is the multi-comparison method and Tukey HSD from stats models. Okay, so Tukey is honestly significant difference to make these comparisons or as an adjustment, a p-value adjustment for these comparisons. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna import multi-comp from stats models. I'm gonna create the interaction groups and then run two key HSD uh, for all adjusted pairwise comparisons. Okay, so importing stats model, import stats models dot stats dot multi comp as MC. So I'm giving it a nickname, and then I'm going to create this new object of interaction groups, and I'm basically going to take uh, anon underscore as a string, and then I'm going to add to it uh, a string uh, based on the consumption anonymity category and then and uh, the same for info. So uh, we'll see what this means in a second. That will basically be anonymity, uh, say, and this will contribute either seen or unseen. This will be info and this will contribute either known, low, high. So we'd get, we get a series of kind of, of kind of strings or categories. So anonymity seen and info known anonymity seen and info low, anonymity seen and info uh, high, something like that. And then anonymity unseen and info known. So uh, to account for all these possible different combinations. So we get it more granular essentially. And then what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna create an object called comp for comparisons. I'm gonna use this multi-comp mc.multi-comparison method. I'm going to pass to that from our, the consumption DV and this second object uh, that we've just created, interaction groups. Okay, and then for, I'm going to create another object called simple F res, so simple effect results, and I'm going to use comp.tukeyhsd. So for this object, I'm going to apply the tukeyhsd method to it, and then that new object, simple F results, we're going to ask for a summary. So if I run that, you will see we've got like lots of comparisons. So hopefully it's clear what, what has just happened. Uh, so here we've got a, a condition. We've got group one group where a participant was in the, or, or all the participants essentially who were in the seen and uh, high uncertainty info, seen anonymity and high uncertainty info conditions. And we've compared their mean against those that were in the uh, seen anonymity and known info conditions. And we look to see if we've got a significant difference between those groups. So it gives us our 2QHD adjusted p-values, shows us the mean difference, um, and it gives us this useful Boolean as well. So we can quickly identify where we have a significant difference. Significant difference here, true, true 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 so we seem to have five group comparisons where they're significantly different from each other okay so let's uh, let's kind of look at this kind of summary of those results that i've typed out here so the above results indicate that we have significant differences between mean consumption 
between a number of groups. OK, so participants in the seen and high uncertainty group had significantly higher consumption than participants in the seen and known info group. And that is a, we've got a p-value there of less than 0 0.001. Uh, let me show you that. So that was our very first line, I believe. So C in high uncertainty, C in known, P is kind of, it's shown as 0.0 because it's been rounded, so it's going to be less than 0 0.001. So we've got a significant difference between those two groups. I've not, read, I've not given the t-values or anything here for this. Uh, participants in the seen uh, and high uncertainty group had significantly higher consumption than participants in the seen and low uncertainty group, P equals 0.005. So let's look at that one as well. So seen and high uncertainty, seen and low uncertainty. Uh, our p-value is, I've rounded it to 2, 0 0.05. And it's true that we can reject the idea that they, the uh, group means are the same. Uh, participants in the seen and known info group had significantly lower mean consumption than participants in the unseen and high uncertainty group. P equals 0 0.0007. Let's have a look at that one. So that's here. So seen and known info, unseen and high uncertainty. P is 0 0.0007. True that we can reject the idea that those means are the same. Participants in the seen and known info group had significantly lower mean consumption than participants in the unseen and known info group. P is equal to 0 0.0002. And Let's just refer to those. That's this line here. You can see seen, uh, seen and known, unseen and known. And we've got a p-value of 0.002. Okay, so last one. I'll leave that there because we have participants in the seen, known info group had significantly lower mean consumption participants in the unseen, low uncertainty info group. And that's this one here, P is equal to 0 0.0001. So true that these groups are significantly different. Uh, right, so I have quickly extracted the results from this table from these different comparisons. Uh, but it, see, I, and I've stated here, this group had higher consumption than that group. Um, you could work that out by the mean difference, essentially, and work out which which was, if you get a negative score, the kind of the uh, lower was, uh, the higher was subtracted from the lower, essentially. Uh, but it'd be useful to have an interaction prop and descriptive st statistics to, to help us to visualize what this pattern of results means and to interpret the effect the interaction is having. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a plot of the significant interaction between the seen and unseen, uh, uh, between seen and unseen in the known category, between seen and unseen in the low uncertainty category, uh, but no difference between seen and unseen in the high uncertainty category. Uh, further, when we just consider the information groups in the unseen category, well, what we're going to see is we'll have a, a blue line that indicates there's no different, significant difference between the groups in terms of consumption. Uh, so the line's almost completely flat. In contrast, we're just going to look at the scene condition, the orange line in this particular plot I'm going to draw here. See, there's a significant difference in consumption uh, between the known and high uncertainty groups and between the low uncertainty and high uncertainty groups. So there's no significant difference between the known and low uncertainty groups. However, uh, this can be seen by the overlapping confidence intervals between those two groups on the orange line. Let's, let me run this. So I'm basically just going to, I'm going to create a point plot using Seaborn, Seaborn uh, SNS dot point plot. The data is our consumption data frame. Our X values are info category. Uh, y values consumption. I'm going to use an for the hue, uh, so different colors. I'm going to set that to the anonymity variable because that has only two levels. So we'll have two lines that we'll look at. Uh, I'm going to use kind of uh, circles and squares for markers. Let me run that and you'll see what is meant by what I just said above. So here we, what we're seeing here is we've got three categories on the x-axis of info, known, low, high. The colors represent anonymity. So orange is seen, blue is unseen. Consumption is our DV, that's our y-axis variable. And you can see here we've got a significant difference in the known 
uh, category between seen and unseen, with unseen having a significantly higher mean. And then for low uncertainty, we've got a significant difference between seen and unseen, with unseen having a significantly higher mean. And then in the high uncertainty, um, it looks like seen has a higher mean than unseen, but the, the confidence intervals, the error bars overlap significantly. And what we found here, there wasn't a statistically significant difference between these two data points. Okay, which makes sense, essentially, looking at them. The other thing is comparing the other the other kind of simple effects were if we just take this orange line in isolation, is there a significant difference between this point and this point, this point and this point, or this point and this point? And what we found was uh, there was a significant difference between this point and this point. So known and high uncertainty, significantly different. And there was a significant difference between uh, low uncertainty and high uncertainty but not between known and low uh, and then if we just look at the unseen category this blue line this is where it says above um, the the lines essentially flat uh, line is almost completely flat so this blue line is almost completely flat there's huge overlap and the means between known low and high in the unseen condition there's very little difference in the consumption decisions that were made. Okay, so a, an interaction plot like this, very useful, can be useful uh, to help us interpret what a complex set of results like uh, of, of kind of simple effects like this means, essentially, uh, that I've written in text there. Um, the other thing that'd be useful to have would be uh, kind of a printout of what this mean is, what this mean is, what this mean, and what this is, what this is, what this is, in terms of the mean for each of those groups. Uh, so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to append our interaction groups to the data frame. So you can see there it gives us them, it gives them, gives us unseen known, unseen known, broken down just as one category, uh, as one, as one variable. And then I'm just going to create a, no, a load of new objects unseen known, unseen low, unseen high, unseen known, unseen low, unseen high. And I'm going to use the dot loc method and I'm going to use, we're going to take interaction group and specify when it's exactly, when the label is exactly the same as this string, we're just going to match it up with whatever the consumption is, essentially the value of that group's song consumption. So I'm going to create these six new objects and then I'm going to pass them to these print statements. Uh, I've used F strings and we're going to round to two decimal places. So let me run that and then run this. And you can see hopefully that that is quite useful information to have for when we're trying to interpret what we found here. So what we found was, for example, in the known category, there was a significant difference between unseen and seen in terms of mean consumption. Uh, so known category unseen mean of 6.38 seen mean of 3.50 okay so significantly higher there and that's what that's roughly about what we're seeing here yeah okay so all right that was quite a lot to get through so the what these two key hsd pairwise comparisons the interaction plots and mean scores uh broken down by interaction group they help us to make sense of and understand the interaction essentially uh, so the general story that this data set tells us is that when participants could not see the other player against whom they were playing, so the unseen condition, they made significantly higher consumption decisions than players who were face to face with the other player. The seen condition, so the blue line there in comparison to the orange, yeah. However, this was not consistent and, and when there was high uncertainty in games, so the amount of it, the information was high, highly uncertain, yeah, um, about how much of the resource was available. Players in both the seen and unseen conditions made similarly high consumption decisions. So that's what we're seeing here, essentially. So what we're seeing here is unseen condition, um, players made higher mean consumption decisions than the seen condition, but it wasn't consistent because when, when, when groups had, had had little information about how much of a resource was available, didn't matter if it was seen or unseen, 
they made similarly high consumption decisions. Okay, right, that was a lot to get through. Hopefully it was useful, hopefully it was interesting. So what we've done here is a two by three independent groups ANOVA. Um, we've, uh, we've conducted tests of homogeneity of variance. We've conducted an ANOVA using stats models. Uh, we found we've got significant interaction and then we've done a load of comparisons, pairwise comparisons using two key HSD um, to see, uh, to interpret that significant interaction and see which groups at a more granular level, which groups differ from which in terms of their mean and what that pattern means. And to help us kind of uh, visualize and understand that in the interaction, we've used this point plot and we've got a print out of the means as well, for comparison. Okay, thanks for listening. Uh, so the next video, I will do a f another factorial and over. This time we'll use a repeated measures design and there will also be a significant interaction in that data as well. And we'll look at how to interpret the results from that. Okay, thank you.